Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Ted my, Jeff, uh, social shift. media manager for the International Foundation for Protection Officers. I'm here with Tim Easton. He is the owner of Castle Defense 360. Tim has developed a new security course called the Certified Security Operations Specialist. Tim, why don't you tell us a little bit about this course, uh, which you, you were going to launch earlier this year. Then we had COVID, which we're still in. And so now you've, you've, uh, you've rearranged things and you're, you're going to have it earlier this year. Tell us a little bit about the course. Time we get a chance to talk on here. Um, I developed this course because I saw a need um, and flaws in the security officer discipline of the industry. Uh, the days of warm bodies having a cell phone, don't do drugs, and have a ride are long over. Um, security officers are getting attacked all the time now, and there's no respect for them. And they're not offered the, the type of training that I'm offering in this course. Um, I built this course myself off of my military background and I kind of had to de-combat it, you know, um, take it away, you know, tailor it to the public sector um, because it's not combat even though we're essentially in, um, for lack of a better term, a civil war. Um, and it covers aspects that are not covered in security officer training. Usually if they're hired or before they're hired, they do an assessment and it's not realistic. And this program was developed to not only improve the security officer discipline, but the security industry as a whole and to give um, new candidates a leg up and make them more competitive in the industry if they want to get into the business. And it's also, you know, good for other parts of the industry. And no matter the, the advanced level that you have, uh, you can always learn. So. Oh, absolutely. And, and Tim, yeah, you, you've got, it's a three day course and you're covering a lot of different subjects. Um, why don't you give us an idea of what those, uh, what those subjects are? I can do that. Um, one of the first things um, for anybody really, but particularly security, is um, situational awareness and understanding behavior. Uh, it's, and we cover it in all of our classes. The first topic we cover is personal profiling, because if you cannot s spot and recognize a threat before something happens, you've already lost the battle. Um, so we cover, you know, how to spot suspicious behavior, how to profile somebody. And it's not racial profiling. Like some people get it confused with that. It has nothing to do with that. It's actually reading people and understanding um, their body language, temperament, and volume when they're talking to you and stuff like that. Um, but that's the first thing that we cover because, uh, like I said, if you can't prevent a threat from happening by recognizing a threat coming, then you, you've already already lost the battle and that's no good. Um, then we cover active attack or threat response, where we cover a wide array, a wide array of uh, different types of threats, from shooters to knife attacks to bats, um, and even vehicles. Vehicle attacks are very hard to defend against. All you can really do is tell everybody to get out of the way. Um, but we also cover that because it's a vital aspect of it. Um, and we also cover counter carjacking in that because people get carjacked all the time, even security officers. Um, then we cover uh, suspicious package IED response and like that. We take them what's called through what's called a signs and indicators lane, and they get graded by their performance on how many IEDs they find and their description of what they saw. Um, because reporting something like that is vital, and if you give not enough information or bad information, uh, the proposal team is not going to be able to do their job effectively. So we, we cover some search procedures and how to do search people and vehicles. Um, and we also do a few hours of static, what we call static executive protection. Um, we do basic formations. We don't go, uh, there's a lot of guys out there that have been doing it much longer than I have. Um, but we want to give them the basic knowledge of formations, communication, um, procedures, how to plan uh, for an event and how to protect the VIP and uh, how to basically get them out of harm's way. Um, and it, like I said, it's not very in depth, but it's enough to give you a base knowledge on how to protect people, whether you're protecting a VIP or just a visitor to your facility. Um, then we do checkpoint operations where um, the checkpoint 
is your basically your first line. Uh, I, I apologize. Your folks were were having a little a uh, little bit of uh, technical difficulties with Tim. Uh, hopefully he uh, hopefully he gets back to us soon. Tim, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine, okay. and I can see you. All right, you 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 cut out just a little bit. Um, so yeah, if you could if you could uh, start back from where you were about maybe thirty seconds ago, uh, that would be helpful. Okay. Checkpoint checkpoint right. operations another thing we cover. Um, that's your first line of defense, and you can basically make a checkpoint out of anywhere, even a parking lot, sidewalk, stuff like that. And we teach how to do a proper vehicle search with mirrors, flashlights, where to look, um, and what to look for. The interview process, uh, if you see somebody suspicious drive up, you interview them and ask them. We have a list of about 10 questions, and, you know, people can add to it if they think they need to. Um, but stopping the threat from, um, or stopping an attack from actually happening, operations is key. You, if, you, if the bad guy can get to your front door, there's a good chance he's going to get in. So, um, and that's a, that's a good block of instruction. Um, then we got cover emergency planning and first aid, basic first aid, how to apply a tourniquet, uh, how to actually the process you go through for uh, addressing a wound and stopping the bleeding and stuff like that. Um, and we go discuss rally points. We go out and set up rally points and we discuss how many you should have, what type of materials you need to have there and equipment and how it should be run. Um, and we go over checklists of, you know, different point to help dress wounds or help with shock or any a wide variety of stuff um, and then we cover anti-terrorism it, uh, it's, it's an hour long we discuss different terrorist groups internationally and domestically uh, where they operate who supports them and things that you can do to prevent a terrorist attack from happening um, and then we do a fun part it's a end of course exercise where they take everything that they learned um, two and a half days and they conduct it for lack of a better term a mission um, and we don't give them instruction throughout that but we do give them guidance and we help them along because we don't want them to fail you know sure. and that defeats the purpose of the course so we'll give them guidance along the way um, and we've added a riot scenario in there for obvious reasons right, um, right. very pertinent and then yeah, and then they do a 25-question test, and we, you know, conduct an after-action review and discuss how the class went, and they, that way we get from the students on how we can improve and what they got out of the course. Um, so it, it's it's very in-depth, but it kind of makes sense if you think about the world today. Uh, these topics are important, especially the IED portion. Because uh, you never know. I see all kinds of reports where people are doing the wrong things, picking up suspicious, you know, packages and taking them to the police station or fire station. Oh. And it turns out it, they were carrying an IED in their vehicle from their home. So they put people in jeopardy. So yeah. it, it's an important course. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, at, at the beginning of, of what you were talking about here with the description of, of what you're offering, you, you talk about violence towards uh, security officers and I don't have stats in front of me, but I can tell you anecdotally, you know, when looking at the news every day, it seems like we're, we're seeing an uptick in that, more and more attacks on security officers. So security officers not only have to be concerned with protecting property and, and people, but they also have to be concerned with protecting themselves. So I think, I think what you're teaching also can be applicable to that. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it, it's sad because they are, they're not respected, you know, they're often called rent-a-cops and stuff like that. But part of it's policy from the companies that they work for or the client that their company has a contract with. Well, you know, they don't want you to do anything because they're afraid of lawsuits. Well, that's why you hire security. And that's why you have insurance. But the key to the, the, some keep something from happening is prevention. And that's why we cover personal profiling. If you can spot somebody that's not acting right, you can sorry Tim we uh, um, they're getting attacked every day okay 
Yeah, and hey, let's let's jump to you have an early registration discount uh, for folks um, that you're starting. Let's let's talk about that. Yeah, it's uh, four hundred and fifty dollars, and it ends in November twenty first. Sorry, November twenty first. I apologize again, folks. We we. Um, we had these technical difficulties yesterday. We, we, we tried it again from a different location. Uh, Tim, can you hear me? Yep. Oh, okay. Sorry, you cut out again. It was, it was uh, from now until November 21st, I think you said? Yes, that's correct. And we did that because we understand that Christmas is coming. COVID has put a damper on a lot of people's budgets and stuff like that. So, and one of the ways we can offer stuff like this is we just request a higher student count than a lot of companies do um, so that we can make, keep our prices affordable to people. And the big companies don't want to pay for their guards and their officers to get the advanced training because it makes them worth more and makes them more marketable. Well, we'll Sorry, you said it said it uh, makes them more marketable, so they don't want to pay. Tim, yeah, you, uh, yeah, you you were saying it it, it uh, they don't want some companies don't want to pay for continuing education because it makes their their employees more marketable, and and therefore they might look for other work. I think is what you were saying. Basically, yes, and you know it, it would make them worth more monetarily speaking, you know they, they could want more money and rightfully deserved for having a, it's not offered to them right now. So this, that's, what, that's what this course can do for, for people either who are uh, just getting into the security industry or maybe they've been in it for a while. This is uh, it's a great thing to have on the resume. I mean it, it's great also just to have as knowledge, but, but it's also, you know, feather in the cap, uh, you know, when, you, when you're writing up your resume. Absolutely, and I pride myself in providing unconventional um, training, unconventional response methods, because what's been working in the past is no longer working, because if the threat environment has changed, um, and you have to have advanced levels of training these days, even to be a security officer. Absolutely. Tim, was there anything else you, you wanted to add? Uh, I'm going to put in the, in the description of this video, I'm going to, I'm going to put uh, the link where people can find out more information about the course and they can take advantage of the, uh, of the discount. But is there anything else you wanted to tell us about it? Um, just that it's a, it's a unique program and we hope to really get this thing to take off uh, because it was built with the security officer, law enforcement officer in mind to make them again more marketable and better prepared for a wide variety of incidents. So we're looking forward to hopefully not canceling again because of COVID. Um, but I'm looking forward to getting this class filled and uh, getting some people taught so that they can go home at night at the end of this shift. Right. And it's, it's going to be, I don't know if we mentioned this, it's going to be in Florida uh, in uh, January. At um, I think it's called the Force Institute. Is that right? Tim? Yeah, it's the Force Center. The Force Center. Sorry, the Force Center. Yep. Uh, and it's and it's January. Is it twenty first, twenty second, and twenty third? Twenty second to the twenty fourth. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay, got gotcha. you. Great. In uh, in I believe it's a Mokali. Florida. Is that right? Tim. Yep. Okay. I'm here. Sorry. I, it, it, yeah, we just, the, we're being plagued with uh, these technical difficulties. I, I yeah, w w um, I'll have all the information below in the, uh, in the description. Thanks so much for your time, Tim. I, I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll make sure to get the word out there for this, uh, this great course that you're offering. All right. Thanks, Ted. I appreciate the time. Will do.